quiet on the set. Quiet, quiet, quiet. Okay, let's go. Hi, I'm Blaine Irving. And if you're listening to me right now and you're listening in your car, you are probably listening to us from the TuneIn app on your phone. If you're listening from anywhere else, you could be listening to us from the computer or possibly the TuneIn app on Roku TV. Regardless, you are listening to the best station in Detroit, the platform of champions, Worship Center Radio. Hello, this is Apostle Nataki Tompkins, and you're listening to Worship Center Radio, the platform of champions. Are you willing to support a ministry that's doing work for the Lord worldwide? We understand that it's hard wanting to make sure that you sow into good ground. Well, Worship Center Radio is good ground. Reaching as many as 50 countries worldwide, we have put the great commission given to us by Jesus Christ in action. Support us as we continue to do the work. Go to www.worshipcenterradio.net and on the right hand side click the donate now area and send us your gift so we may continue to broadcast throughout the world and bring to you programming that elevates you to the next level in God. We thank you for your support and continue to listen to Worship Center Radio, the platform of champions. From Detroit to the nations, you are listening to the world's number one Christian station, Worship Center Radio, the platform of champions. Welcome to Glamour Shop Talk with your host, Vicki Johnson. Hello, listening audience. Thank you for joining us today on Glamour Shop Talk. And once again, we have an exciting guest. Her name is Renetta Manise. Hi, Renetta. Say hi to everybody. Hello, Vicki. Hello, everybody. And her awesome grandson is here. Uh, you are going to be enlightened today and blessed today because this woman uh, is an awesome woman. She has a fabulous background and I am excited to have her as my guest today. Before we get started, first of all, we want to thank Worship Center Radio and we want to have a word of prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this is the day that you have made and we are rejoicing and we are glad therein. We ask that you bless our listening audience. We bless the Worship Center Radio and that you bless Glamour Salon, Renetta Manise and her family. Now, as our listening audience is listening, we ask that we enlighten them, bless them, and give them something that will be a blessing to their lives today. Information. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Renetta, um, first of all, I want to tell our listening audience a little bit about you. Okay. She is a client at Glamour Salon, and uh, meeting her was a God opportunity. She is a mother. She's a grandmother. She's a, a sister. She is an awesome author. And she has another area that's very near and dear to her heart. But before we delve deeply into um, her anointed uh, ability to be an author, I just want our listening audience to uh, know a little bit about you. Okay. First of all, um, where are you from? I was born and raised in the D. Wow. Yes, ma'am. In was, the D. In the D. Wow. I was raised in Detroit, and I lived in Detroit until I was 40 years old. Really? Yes, ma'am. Really? That and is... I'm right near Detroit right now. I'm in Southfield. Okay. Which is nothing but little Detroit. For I'm there from. you go. There you go. <laughs> So, um, did you have siblings? Uh, where did you go to high school, elementary? I have, I had, unfortunately, he passed away uh, a couple of years ago. 
uh, an older brother. It was okay. just three of us. Okay. I had an older brother and a younger sister. Okay. My mother so you're the middle. To, my mus- mother used to say I was the meat. <laughs> they were the bread. And, I was, and you were the meat. I was the meat in the middle. <laughs> And uh, we lost we lost my brother to Alzheimer's, um, as we did for my mom. We lost my mom to Alzheimer's, wow. which is I'm a, an Alzheimer's advocate. Okay. Uh, among other reasons, it's hit many people in our family. Yes. And uh, my younger sister, uh, thank the Lord, is still here. She's awesome. still with us awesome. around, and all three of us were raised uh, uh, in Detroit. Wonderful. Uh, I'm a graduate of Cass Tech. Woo! My husband C-T. would love to hear that. Yes. He's a graduate of Cass Tech. <laughs> Cass Tech and Wayne State University. I'm Wonderful. Graduate, graduate of Wayne State. So I'm a, I'm a very much a local product. Yes. And proud of it. And not only a local product, but an awesome local product. Well, thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you. The she, Lord has been good to yes, me. Yes. He, well, he's good to all of us. Yes, You he know, is. all the time. Yes, he is. But, you know, I... Um, He's done some really unusual things for me, okay. and I'm, I'm so thankful. Wonderful. So thankful. So you said you're a graduate of Wayne State. Um, what did you get your degree in? My degree is in mass communications. Mm. And I started, I started, I think as I mentioned to you before, when mm-hmm. I started college, I was in pre-law. Okay. And about halfway through, I realized that I didn't have the funds okay. to graduate get okay. my bachelor's and then go on to three more years of school. Okay. So I switched my major to journalism because I've always loved to write. Wonderful. And but shortly after I did that, I became aware of what was at that time a brand new um curriculum, brand new major. Okay. Um that was called mass communications. Wow. And what it did was taught all the communicative Media. Okay. Uh, as well as writing, I had classes in television production. Mm-hmm. I had classes in radio production. Wonderful. I had classes in photography. Mm-hmm. So it basically just covered mass communication. That's awesome. You know, and it was new now. I mean, that was, uh, oh, let's see, that would be about 670. Two, okay. When I switched my major. Okay. So, okay. and it was brand new then. It was just like, you know, everybody was excited and everything yes. about it then. Yes. It's, um, well, you know, it's, it's, it's a well-established major now. Yes, it is. In fact, I think at Wayne State, they call it something different. Okay. The mass communicative arts or whatever. But see, it was perfect for me. Okay. Because communication has always been one of my major interests, yeah. whether you, it's speaking, I'm a singer, wow. I'm an actress. Wow. Uh, for it's two, why you, you know, were born. You know. It's, it's to communicate through the different arts, huh? Yeah. That's just where my heart is. That's I, I was awesome. a disc jockey for two years. Were you where? Uh, WXLA, which ah. is in Lansing. It's yes. an oldie station. Yes. And I was known on the air as Shalomar Brown. You Honey, I am girl. the baddest girl in town. <laughs> <laughs> Shalimar, Shalimar Brown, the baddest Shalimar girl in town. Shalimar Brown, baddest girl in town in Lansing. That's right. Awesome. And it was an oldie station. Yes. And, um, one of the one of the taglines was "We don't hip and we don't hop." All right. Because it was you know geared towards exactly primarily old you know, and my my tagline was "Well, I don't know about you, but I my hips won't let me hop." No <laughs> <more."> <laughs> See, she's a comedian, too. (laughs) She communicates through laughter. But when I found out about that uh, major Mm -hmm. that covered all these aspects of media, I said, that's me. That's you. That's for me. That works. Yeah. So um, let's recap. Uh, You were born and bred in Detroit. In the D. Had uh, two other siblings. Mm -hmm. Your mom, your author. uh, You were blessed to be on the cusp of getting a degree in mass communications. That was a new area that was being introduced through the Wayne State. Uh, So when did you have that beautiful daughter that I met? When did she come along? She came along. Actually, (laughs) it was touch and go as to whether she or my degree would get here first. Oh, (laughs) boy. Okay. (laughs) Because she was born, actually... I had to get up from my my confinement bed after she was born to go take my finals. 
Are you kidding? To my last quarter of school to get my degree. Wow. That's how that's how close it, you know, wow. it came in there. Yes. And um I had her, I missed her by I missed a week of school, but I wasn't about to miss my finals. Wow. Because after all those four years of hard work, yes. I wanted my degree. This is a woman of tenacity. You know. See, uh, <laughs> young people, if you think that you look and life is easy. Everyone has challenges. Yes. It's all about how you're going to decide to handle them. Exactly. And you were determined and focused and said, nothing will stop me. Mm -mm. So things can't just get handed to you. You must work for it. You must be focused and you got to stay determined. Yes, ma'am. Tenacity is so very important. Yes, so what is your daughter's name and what does she do? My daughter's name is Tiffany. Tiffany. She is a... a a beautiful lady, a beautiful, multi-talented lady. Okay. She currently works for the United States government. Wonderful. And I think she's approaching 20 years Wow. with the government at this point. However, she is also a student at Wayne State. She just awesome. got, she got her associate's degree. Okay. Um, was that last year or year before last? Okay. And now she's working on her, her bachelor's. Wow. And she should get her bachelor's next year. Awesome. And she will be going into social work. That is awesome. Yeah. At so, one point, she thought she wanted to be a nurse. Okay. And she was geared toward nursing classes, but then it came to her. One thing that called her, which I told her, I said, I don't see how you can even deal with that, is hospice. Mm. She was called to work yes. with people in hospice. Yeah. And I couldn't do it. Right. I could not it, do it. It's, it's, it's. You know, to deal with people yeah. that are dying. Yes. You know. It's more than a but notion. that's what she was called to do. Yeah. And she has done it. And she has the capacity. She has done it. She, she has worked yeah. with several people. Wow. And worked and with them right up until they died. Really? Yes. That's you know? phenomenal. And when that happened, she realized that she didn't really want, nursing wasn't where she needed to be. She needed to be in social work. Gotcha. Yeah. So she changed her. And fortunately, a lot of the classes that she had taken yes. towards one could be applied toward the other. Got you. So that's where she is. Got she, I'm so proud of her and her daughter. They're both in college. My granddaughter wow. is, goes to college at Bethune-Cookman awesome. in uh, Florida. I love that. She's going to be a Ooh, Black college. Yes. yes. Black college Historically university. Historically black child. Yes. I love it. She is um, going to be a special ed teacher. Awesome. So she they, they'll be graduating the same year. Oh, that would be beautiful. Both of them. Isn't that something? That's I'm so awesome. proud of them. Just, the Lord is so good that my family. I, you know, I'm just. So after you graduated from Wayne State, what was your career path? I mean, what did you well, do? Well, I tell you, what I wanted to do was I wanted to work for one of the local television stations. Okay. Mm -hmm. 247 you know, back in that day. You huh? know, yeah. And Channel 9. There you go. Or, or radio. or 56, yeah. You know. WCHB. Or. But what happened was, unfortunately, right when I graduated, uh -huh. that's what some of the, your younger viewers may not know this because they weren't alive when it happened, but there was a great big depression. Yeah. Yes. That's when um, Carter yes, was president. Yes, I remember. And it was just like most of your viewers, I'm sure, know about what we just went through yes. with the housing business yes. where a lot of people Plummeted. lost their houses and the economy. Well, this wasn't as bad, but it was very bad. Yes. And jobs were hard to find. Yes, so I got, they were. I got offered a job with the United States government okay. as a claims representative okay. to take claims from people. Yes. And I said, well, I'm going to take this and I'm going to stay with it till till things turn around with the mm -hmm. economy, and then mm -hmm. I'm going to go okay. to what you call it. Right. But what happened is, once I started that working with the government. That was your plan to go to you know, TV or radio. Or radio. Okay. So it was just a you bridge. Know, it was just a bridge. Got gotcha. you. I thought. I thought. Yeah. <laughs> what happened yeah. was, they had a built-in pay scale. Yes. For the first three years, you got some pretty substantial pay scales. Gotcha. So by the time the economy got better, mm -hmm. I had reached the top of that pay mm -hmm. thing. Yes. And for me to leave and go, and I did get some offers. Okay. But I would have had to take a five to $10,000. Uh, and you had cut. a daughter at that time, so it was difficult. Yeah. But you know what's so awesome about you is that you held on to your first love. Yeah. And uh, as you were sta stating 
in college, you majored in mass communications, which covered journalism, it covered um, uh, acting, TV, all forms of media. Yeah. And just to let my listening audience know that uh, Miss Raynetta is the author of four paperback. Six. Six paperback six. books. Six. Okay. Uh huh. And how many e books? And 60 books. And six, 12 books. She did not let her passion go. Mm -mm. And this is what I'm saying. This is why we do this show and bring special guests because we want to let people know that there's a purpose and plan God has for your life. Yes, sir. Not is. to lean to your own understanding, but stay focused. Yes, sir. Because, is. um, Follow her books, her ebooks. Follow your heart. My Alzheimer's Diary. All in the way home. Uh, wishing on a star. All for love. Fantasy. And like I said, the other six paperback books. I mean, that was bottled up in you. It was. It was. It, so it was, talk, it, talk to us about that. Well, what happened was, I started the government job. Yes. The pay got good, and after a while, I started getting promotions. Got gotcha. you. Because by the time I retired, I was a district manager. Oh, I, I wow. Had, you... I had two offices. Wow. Under, under me. A district and, manager. And, you know, like, like I, I kept my hand in the communicative arts by writing short stories. Got gotcha. you. So okay. I was writing short stories. I was writing short news articles. Yes. Uh, I was doing local theater. Wow. I did what a is lot. Some, you were know. you in plays? I was in plays. Uh-huh. I was in um, uh, West Side Story. Awesome. I was in, now this was in Lansing. There yes. was a theater called the Riverwalk Theater. Okay. I was on the board of directors of the, of the theater for two years. Wonderful. So um, we did, I know we did West Side Story. There was, oh my God, I can't. Uh, I wanted to direct The Wiz, but I got. Okay. They did do it, okay. but I had moved out of the city by the time they produced it. So, what was your strongest passion, writing or acting? You know what? That's just like saying, which one of your children do you love? Okay, most? I got gotcha. you. It really is Say, right because uh -huh. you know I love them all. Yes. They all have. They all. You don't want to put yourself in limits. Do something for me. Okay. But gotcha. different things. But different things. Different I got things, you. you know. You know what though? This is a this is uh one of the things I want to touch on while we're here. Because we might have some listening audience that says, Wow, Miss Renetta, you work first of all, you went to school, you had a family, you took care of your um uh, your ch your daughter, but you still focused and you pressed on. But how? How did you get these books published? That that's that that yeah. big how that question mark of how do you do this? And that, Can you address me, that, that for that's me? one of the questions I received most. But my first book came out in nineteen ninety six. Wow! So I'll be celebrating my twentieth year years. as a published author next uh -huh, year. Uh -huh. Now what happened was this: the book that I wrote was not supposed to be a book. It was ah. it was going to be a short story. Okay. But it just kept growing. Oh. I, you know, it just kept, you know, this, uh -huh. I, just, I just kept saying, no, I want to add this, this, and this. Right. So anyway, to make a long story short, it wound up being 95,000 words. Wow. By the time I got through with it. And I did not write it for publication. Really? I just wrote it because it was, I just, I needed to write it. Wow. Uh, you know, I felt like when I started writing that book, I didn't have a computer. Like okay. I'm saying this is 1996. Yeah, yeah. I used to stay late at work. Yes. After after hours okay. and write my book on their computers. Wow. I used to go down to the local community college. Yes. To the computer. They had a computer So you lab. did whatever was necessary. Yeah, I did. So what you would do is that you would allow yourself to be outside of a box and... Think of creative ways to do what you needed to do. It just it was a need in me. I and that's know, what I it has to be. This, it has to be a need, don't, sounds, don't you think? It sounds stupid. No. But I tell people this and it's the honest to God truth. Mm -hmm. They kept saying, Well, why are you so deep into this book? I said, I want to see how it turns out. Wow. And that sounds crazy to no. come from the person that wrote it. Right. But that's where it was. Because wow. as I was writing this thing, it seemed like it was taking turns okay. that I hadn't envisioned, okay. but this was the way it had to go. So after you finished writing the book, did you 
um, know of any publishers or Child, other I didn't know what I was doing. Really? Let me tell you what I did. I, you know, because I, okay, I let my daughter and my girlfriends yeah. read it. And I, like I said, I didn't intend for it to be published. Right, right, right. But they were saying, Renetta, this is good. You got to see about getting this published. Okay. Yeah. So Renetta is going, because that thing is entirely written. Okay. I'm going to put this bad boy in an envelope. Yes. I'm going to ship it off to a publisher. Okay. And you know, they always tell you, send a self-addressed return envelope. Oh, okay. I put this thing in an envelope on a Thursday, sent it off. It came back to me in the mail on Monday. What? With a rejection letter. Oh, no. But what I found out is this. There is a certain format okay. that you have to present. You didn't give up, huh? To, you know? Mm -hmm. Well, I didn't know what... See, I, the first mistake I made is I should have researched what I was doing. Okay. Before gotcha. I just jumped in there. Okay. Because of what happened was... Okay, for example, they want... This is back in the old days of paper. Okay. Now, I have to say now, this was before e-books. Okay. Which is a whole totally different head now. Okay. But back then, where everything was paper, the publishers wanted submissions. First of all, some of them wouldn't accept you if you didn't have an, an agent. Wow. So if they found out, you read, they read your cover letter, you had no agent, boop, your stuff went right back to you right there oh, or in the garbage. Oh, no. Secondly, they wanted it double-spaced. Okay. And I didn't know that. Okay. So I sent them my stuff single space. Well, they didn't even read it. So what you're they saying They looked at to it me. and they said, this woman doesn't know what she's doing. Right. And she doesn't care enough what she about she's she doing to, ch to find ah. out how to do it the so right way. So it's so important for you to do your homework. Thank you. You got to do your homework. And, and wouldn't you say that, uh, let, let, let me, because I want to let our listening audience know too, where can they get your books? My books are all available uh, on uh, Amazon.com, and they're all available on BarnesandNoble.com. Can you say that again and give your full name? Okay. Let me, could, could I? Just, yes. Because I got such a strange name. Maybe yes. some people see it. Yes. I hope you guys can, can see this. That's my name. It's spelled R-A-Y-N-E-T-T-A -T -T -A is the first name. Last name M-A-N-E-E-S. And you can just put my name in the Google. It'll lead you to all my books. I have several websites. Um, I'm on Amazon.com. You put go to Amazon.com. Put my name in the search engine. All my books are gonna fall out for you. I'm also on BarnesandNoble.com, which is BN.com. Ah, okay. It's Barnes and Noble. They have the Nook. Okay. Amazon has the Kindle. Gotcha. Okay. Um, so, but I'm I'm available on both of those. I'm not in the iStore. Okay. I'm not in the eye store because I just, I guess I just never got to. Well, it's okay. <laughs> but for the next three minutes, what I want to do, too, is talk about your next love. You have two other passions. And so we want to talk to you for the next two minutes now about those two other passions. And that is helping African-American women. Yes, ma'am. And also Alzheimer's. Yes, ma'am. Both. So of them. tell me what that what what those passions are all about. Oh, okay. Let me let me maybe cover the Alzheimer's first. Okay. Alzheimer's runs in my family. Gotcha. Uh, it killed my and a lot of people don't know Alzheimer's is a fatal disease. Yeah. A lot of people don't know that. They just think that you you know you can just sit up there with Alzheimer's forever. No, it, it will kill you. It will tell your brain to tell your heart to stop beating. Wow. To tell your lungs to start, you know, stop breathing. breathing. Alzheimer's is a fatal disease, and wow. there is no cure for it. Wow. It killed my grandmother. Wow. It killed my mother. It killed wow. my brother. Wow. Many members of my family have had it. I've had aunts that have died from okay. it. Okay. You know. Now, the thing, when I say it killed them, what happens with Alzheimer's is, a lot of people don't contract Alzheimer's until they're up in age. Gotcha. And a lot of times before Alzheimer's can kill them, something else does. Gotcha. You know, they get, you know, yes. pneumonia or cancer or something yeah. else. So it is a fatal disease, but unfortunately a lot of people die of other causes before before the gotcha. Alzheimer's kills. Them. Okay. Okay. But in any case, when my brother passed away, it was just something inside me that that just said and then what happened was they thought I had it. Mm. Why I was didn't, that? you know, I was doing things, I was forgetting things. Mm. I was getting lost. Gotcha. I was forgetting, I had all classic symptoms of it. Gotcha. Unknown to me, my daughter went to my doctor. Okay. 
who was her doctor too. Exactly. And ran it on him. Okay. And he said she's got to be tested immediately. Gotcha. Because there is a medication that if you have all nothing can cure it and nothing can stop it. Okay. But there is this medication that can slow down the progress. Gotcha. Okay. And the earlier you start taking it, the better. The better it does. So it's important. Okay. If you think you have it to be to be uh, diagnosed as quickly ASAP. That's so right. you can get on that medicine. So we don't need to be afraid of doctors. We need no. to partner with our doctor and to be uh, advocates for early, yes. early diagnosis. It's, it's critical. It okay. can make a critical difference. Right. So anyway, I went through the whole, believe me, it, the whole screening process took six months. It's, wow. It's, it's, in fact, let me, if you don't mind, throw no. this up here. This is a book that I wrote about that experience is called my Alzheimer's diary mm -hmm. and it is about the experience that I had in being diagnosed because what I found out is there's a lot of books about what Alzheimer's is there's a lot of books about symptoms yes there's a lot of books about how to take care of somebody with okay. Alzheimer's uh -huh. but there are very few books about the process wow of being diagnosed okay Okay. You know? Yeah. And that's why I saw a need. Because when I when they told me you might have it, I was trying to look out. Well, what's going to happen to me? What do I have to do? There yes. wasn't much out there to tell me. Wow. Okay. So that's this is filling that gap. This tells you what they do to you. So let's talk uh, about your next passion. What uh, for the next couple of minutes? Because we want to get your wonderful grandson on here. Oh, okay. Before we leave. Okay. So your next passion is? My next passion is the image of the black woman. I love that. Because, okay. Are you going to write a book about it? Are you starting an organization to, Actually, to I, have I classes? Started, I started a blog. Fabulous. I have started a blog. Okay, where's your blog? My blog is called My Head Wrap. All right now. R-A-P. I and love I'm, it. And I've got a picture of me with a big old head. I love it. <laughs> and... The the uh the tagline is rapping about the stuff in my head. I love it, girl. That but is that, awesome, Miss Renita. That um website is for okay black women. Good. It they add the um information that I deal with. The the it's about it's a social commentary. Yes. But it is about things of interest to everybody. Yes. Actually. Yes. But particularly black women. For example, Sandra Bland, a young lady. Yes. That, you know, that got murdered. Yes. As far as I'm concerned. That's what happened. You know. Um, I've got an article on there about uh, who's a hoe. Okay. What is Very a Very good. Yes. I've got an article on there about, um, what was that last one I put on there? About black mothers telling their black daughters that they're beautiful. Yes. There's a young lady, I met this young lady named Oya, that's okay. a poet. Mm. And she wrote a poem and wow. that's to my to my daughter. Wow. And basically it's going through saying you so are So you it's a, um, a a blog of encouragement right. of information of of just you know So anything tell us that's once again how how they can get to you with this blog and I'm and I'm going to have Jeffrey come on cuz we have <laughs> Only about two minutes. Okay, left. all right. The blog, the blog is called My Head Rap. Uh huh. And all you gotta do go to go to Google and put My Head Rap without the W, not not W R A P rap. Uh huh. But rap like talking rap. Talking R -A -P. rap. My, and it, I'm sure it'll pop up. Okay, Grandma, I want you to interview this awesome young man Come here, handsome who young is man. your grandson, and we have the privilege of having him with us. So. All right, I'm just putting the Jeffrey legend out there, all of y'all who may not know me. I'm Jeffrey Young, and I have a grandma who writes romance novels, and I have to say, they're pretty good. You should buy them on Amazon, on her, um, on all of her web pages, uh, all three of her web pages. So, and, and let me say this: Jeffrey well. is a reader. He's <laughs> a leader. And where do you go to school, Jeffrey? And how old are you? Pepper Elementary, and I am nine years old. Awesome. You can look for him because he's one of our future leaders. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. And when I grow up, I, um, I plan on make, being a video game designer. All right. So first, I'm going to start by getting on all them websites, like um, 
like creating RPG games and stuff like that. So then I'm gonna start animating stick figure from this flash animation um website I've heard about. So um when I'm a little bit older on the on the internet, watch out for um for stick animations. And say your name again, Jeffrey. My name is Jeffrey Young. Say it again. Jeffrey Young. Jeffrey, Jeffrey, Jeffrey Young. Jeffrey Young what? Jeffrey Young Jr. Okay. Wonderful. Right. So Jeffrey Young Sr. won't feel. I know. <laughs> won't feel left out. I know. Jeffrey, thank you so thank much. Thank you, sweetie. Give me a kiss. Oh, thank you. Ooh. Renetta. I'll take you with Manise. me where I go. I know. That's it. the best commercial I ever had. I tell you, he's the best. <laughs> Watch out for my animation videos. They're going to be really good. That's right, right Jeffrey. Thank you, this is Jeffrey. XOXO. Peace out. All right. And this is Victoria Johnson, Glamour Shop. You can find us at 28801 Southfield Road, Latham Michigan, Wednesday through Saturday. And you can reach us at 248-423-7776. This is Glamour Shop Talk. We'll see you next time. Hi. Bye, everybody. Woo! Thank you for listening to Glamour Shop Talk. Join us again every Wednesday at 3 p.m. and visit us at GlamourSalons.com.